Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Kentucky Route Zero. Now you might be wondering, well this looks unfamiliar, why are you at this screen? Well it seems like the curse of having recording problems with this game has yet to escape me because basically what happened was I went to this location in the game and this is literally the first scene you encounter when, okay so basically last episode I was just wandering around a lot if you can recall and there's the, there was this mine in the top right corner that we were supposed to be able to go to so I went to it, and then I went inside the mine, and then the game kind of just effed up on me. So nothing else happened besides me. You, you saw like the exterior of the mine, that's the only thing you missed, but we'll see it again later on, if I remember correctly. So this is the first thing that happens when we go to the mine. So that's, that's what happened, if you're wondering why this looks so unfamiliar. Alright, so Shannon speaks into the large brick cell phone held up to her ear. And you might wonder, okay, why are you controlling a different character as well? Well, that's one of the things with this game, is that you don't realize this until a bit later on, but the game actually switches between different characters that you control personally. So that's strange, but that's just the way it is. So I guess we have to choose what she's saying in response to whoever's on the phone. I guess I'll just say it's $200 for two weeks. And then we have just an audible on the phone, and... That's kind of strange, because we have to determine what she says based upon something that we can't hear. But she can hear it, apparently. So it's like it's like we're controlling her in the first person, but at the same time, we have an outside perspective. Because we can't hear the person on the phone. It's weird. But, whatever. I guess, can I trust him not to just change the locks? Inaudible. Yes, and I appreciate that, but... Okay, you're right. Just never mind. I have to go. Sorry. Yes, and I appreciate that, but okay. Um, forget it. Bye. Eh, whatever. Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Love you. There. And now, there's Conway. So yeah, basically, the second we got to the mine, you lose control of Conway. So yeah, so because we're controlling her, Conway is a stranger, even though we obviously know who he is. So that's kind of a weird way of looking at things, but okay then. Excuse me, ma'am. And that's even the stranger thing, is that now he's talking by himself without us controlling him, so that is quite strange. Okay, excuse me, ma'am. I saw the light was on, and I'm looking for the on-ramp, too. You're gonna say, are you here to kick me off the property, or do you believe in ghosts? Well, if I say this, I think she'll sound a bit too much like that Marquez individual, because that's just some random statement that has nothing to do with what he asked, so I guess I'll say are you here to kick me off the property? Oh, no, no, I guess you don't belong here either, do you? Do you work for the power company? Are you just out wandering? Ha, huh. well, I do drive a lot, just me and the road mostly when the sun is out. You sound lonely. <laughs> is that your job driving? I guess we'll be an asshole and say you sound lonely. <laughs> nah, I get by. Here's what it is. I drive delivers for a shop called Lizette's Antiques. Oh, I guess it isn't, because I guess Lizette owns an antique store, so... Okay, yeah, because Lizette, I think, was mentioned earlier on in this game. The one thing you can gather from the dialogue, and like I said, if you choose different dialogue options, you can sort of gain, glean different backstory information from the different characters, so... If, if you don't know, I believe he, well, if you remember back in the bait shop, it sort of inferred that he used to work for like a shingling company or whatever, and worked for a guy named Ira, and I believe Ira's husband, or Ira's wife is named Lizette, so I think Ira died, and then he's, Conway's now looking working for Lizette, delivering antiques, which is interesting. Okay, uh, what kind of stuff are you hauling? Antiques. Good stuff. Lizette has a sharp eye for the little good it's done her lately. You know, it's just one recession after another. Everybody's selling their old stuff, but nobody's really buying. I have a delivery for 5 Dogwood Drive, and I can't remember ever seeing that address before. Now I heard you. Now I heard I needed to take a highway called the Zero, so I met this young lady name of Weaver Marquez, and she sent me this way, and so here I am. Uncommon kind of place for an on-ramp, but that's what it's been like for so far. Anyway, with... What? And now we take control of Conway, so that's weird, but... Okay. Weaver Marquez, do you know her? So you saw her, tonight. 
I know Weaver. She was dot dot dot. She is my cousin. I'm Shannon Marquez. Oh, you're the one who fixes televisions. That's right. Did she tell you that too? Of course she did. So yeah, as you kind of saw from like the, I guess, stumbling she had with her speech, it basically sounds like Weaver Marquez is, well, obviously dead. So that, that gravestone back at her house is probably actually her gravestone. So that's kind of interesting to learn. <clears throat> Weaver doesn't lie. Not one time when we were younger, she told me my dad had been in a terrible car wreck. There was crushed metal everywhere, and we'd be hearing it echo through the house for years, she said. I was very upset, crying. And then my dad walked in the, ho in the door, I'd just come back from a trip to the junkyard collecting scrap metal to fashion into wind chimes. I was angry, but she said it wasn't a joke, and it wasn't a lie. At the time, I thought she meant it was a riddle or something. But Weaver's not a puzzle. She's a mystery. <laughs> So what are you doing down here, Shannon? I talked to Weaver earlier this evening, too. Or anyway, she talked... Or maybe not. That's weird, though. Because she said was. So that makes it kind of seem like that maybe these... Like, maybe all these characters are actually dead and they're in, like, purgatory. But they, like... They go between remembering and forgetting about what's really happened to them. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Weird. I guess we'll have to wait and see if the game ever actually tells us, though, because the game kind of is just, I don't know, it, the game doesn't really present information in a clear manner, if, to say the least. Okay, so, yeah, there's that. It's hard to tell if she's listening sometimes. Weaver told me I had to come down here to the old Elkhorn mine. She said I'd find something I've been looking for. What are you looking for? I'm not exactly sure. I have a few ideas. I'll know it when I see it. It's not such a bad thing, you showing up now. All Toad, I'd rather not go down there alone. Your dog should stay up here, though. It's no place for a dog. This is an old mine. It runs pretty deep and tangled. If we're going to go down into it, find your on-ramp and whatever else. We've got to keep our bearings. I don't want to get turned around. I've got some gear here to measure conductivity, frequency, response, stuff like that. Maybe we want to find a way to put a signal out ahead. Do some analysis and figure out what kind of topology we're up against. Topology, okay. Topology, that's the science of continuous space, my friend. The way this twisty maze of passages fits together. Guess we'll walk this way then. It's kind of funny because it seems like almost everyone and everything in this town and who we've encountered is in some way either dead or, de or decaying or something like that like that's like that's what all the visuals and buildings seem to suggest everything's kind of just dead or dying there's a pa guess we'll talk into it that runs into the mines pa system do you think it still works the little light on the front of it is off oh there's no power yeah okay even this old place mine Old place mine. Old mine. I don't know why I interjected a place in there, but okay. Even when this old mine was up and running, it was tricky to keep stuff powered. You know, the miners used to have to pay just to run the fans and the lights. Yeah, they got paid in these shitty plastic tokens. Coal script, you know? And if you want to run the fans for a bit to clear the air up, well, you have to put a token in. My parents used to work here. So did Weaver's parents. I guess a lot of folks' parents worked here. So let's just head into the mine and see what we see. Okay. No, I definitely feel better getting some readings first. We don't know what it's like down there anymore. Years of seasonal changes and seismic irregularities could have totally reconfigured it. I'm not going in blind and neither are you. She seems to like to use big words, which I guess just shows that she's educated, but I think she does it a bit too excessively. Yeah, I bet we just have to free up some power for the PA system. Everything is rationed. Here, set up that lamp of yours and I'll go unplug these ceiling lights. I can clear his throat nervously. Tries to think of something clever to say. Fidgets with the change in his pocket. Guess let's do that. Well, or dot dot dot. Well, 
Okay, I hear ya. We need to measure the echo delay time and figure out how deep the tunnels run. Just make some noises into the mouthpiece. And yes, if you can hear like one of those really high-pitched whining noises, like it reminds me of that sound kids would always play in like high school because parent or teachers couldn't hear it. They always would play, at least in my generation, a lot of kids would always play this like white noise frequency that's so high-pitched that older people don't have the, like they've lost the ability to hear it because it's so high-pitched. And that kind of sounds like it's coming from the screen net right now and it's a bit irritating. All right. We need to measure the echo delay. Yeah, whatever. I can tap the mouthpiece. Or a finger along the surface or clear my throat. I guess tap it. Yeah, and if you can... The sound is kind of pretty, I don't know, atmospheric right now. It's quite strange. I'm actually going to turn the volume up a bit just in case you all can't hear it because it is quite quiet. Alright, let's scrape some coins. Oh, I got some ASMR stuff going on here. <laughs> Let's blow on the mouthpiece. Doesn't sound like blowing. Damn, that's a long delay. These tunnels run deep. Bet some of them have ruptured or joined up with a cave system. Alright, I set up my spectrum analyzer. So just say anything into the mouthpiece and we can get a sense for how narrow the mine tunnels are. Don't be shy, just say anything that comes into your head. Tell me a story or something, or what did you have for breakfast today? I guess I'll say, here's a story all about how my life got turned upside down. Okay, now. I used to work doing roof repair, and oh god, that's loud. My boss got a real job out in Louis Louisville. Or I can say, we even picked up the church roof once. And that sound though, it's really creepy. Should have taken us an hour to get there. But I was too hungover. But then a thunderstorm hit. Yeah, so it's like in a way we're also making the past of our character. Because these two obviously contradict each other. But we can kind of just choose the past of different characters. Got it. Looks like the tunnels. That was a pretty crappy story. We had a big job, and then a thunderstorm hit, and it was too late. <laughs> a real good story. Sounds like a story I would tell. I usually tell really terrible stories that don't have good, like, endings. Okay, one more test. We just need to know if the air is breathable, or if it's too thin or too dense. Just sit real close to the mouthpiece and breathe. I'll measure the resonance of your breath with the air in the tunnels. Just try to relax, try to breathe naturally. So we can breathe and think about the road, or breathe and think about resting. I guess let's think about the road. On oh, that sound, though. Sounds like a freaking flash bang going off. Aw. <laughs> uh, it breathes and remembers a moment earlier in the day. So it's like we can, we can either choose that he's obsessed with the past, or he just always thinks to earlier things in the same day. I don't know. I guess I'll think about something earlier. Oh, that's great. Getting some pretty strong readings here. I think we're in good shape, but keep at it for a minute. I keep, like, randomly giving people southerner voices, but uh, honestly, I guess that is probably how a, a good number of the people in this game sound. I'm going to turn it down a bit, because that is loud for me, even, so I'd hate to... I'd hate for someone who was wearing earphones or something to get their eardrums broken right now. Uh you can either visualize a hot meal or a cold drink. I guess a cold drink. Breathes and relaxes a peel of feedback and loose rock engulfs him. Oh, that's some great sounds right there. Holy crap. Oh, and then there's a freaking cave-in. That's nice. It's always pleasant when that happens. <laughs> Act 1, Scene 4. Elkhorn Mine. Jesus, are you alright? What the hell? I'm okay, my leg is stuck. Shit, okay, I'm gonna pull you out. We have to get you out of here. There you go. Okay, are you hurt? Can you put any weight on that leg? It's all messed up or it's fine. I'll say it's fine. Just try to stand up. Careful, I'm right here. 
damn, don't worry, I've got you. That leg is in bad shape. Here, let's get you onto the tram. Here, there you go. Now, let's see if this thing has any power. Okay, there's some luck. Right, we should be able to ride this tram right out one of the auxiliary exits or any... It's weird how we can ask about Weaver. What about the on-ramp? We'll just find the exit and then figure out what to do from there. That's our first priority. So, the controls are over on your side. Let's get moving. Oh yeah, we just have to click. And then the tram moves. So now we just get to explore this old mine. I think I mentioned in an earlier episode how I sometimes like to watch people that, you know, explore old abandoned building, buildings and stuff. And it's funny how there's, like, plenty of videos like that out there, but you know what? There isn't many of people that explore stuff like old abandoned mines. And I mean, that makes sense, because for one, well, it's just plain creepy no matter what time of day or anything that you go there. And secondly, I'm sure most people don't exactly want to get lost in some massive cavern or something. And also, it's usually dangerous because you don't know if there might be a hole or something. I guess let's keep going. Oh. Oh, well, we can turn the lights off if we want. Don't know if that's a good idea exactly. That's the exit. We're gonna go backwards, and you might ask, why are we going backwards? Well, basically, it's kind of funny how they just let you exit right away if you want to, but actually, that little turntable, this is about the last place that I was in my sort of failed Let's Play that I made a couple months ago. And we basically are just gonna go in a circle. I just wanted to see whether or not they would let us go to the exit without seeing the turntable, but apparently, they don't even care. Like, you don't even have to look at the turntable without just exiting right away. So yeah, let's look at the turntable. Oh. There we go. Oh, here we are. This may be hard to believe. It's hard for me to believe myself, but this whole branch was underwater last I heard. <laughs> How did that happen? Some careless miner or some unattended machine bored through an underground lake. The water came in pretty fast and a lot of folks got trapped in the tunnels. I only heard parts of how it went from there. Sanitized for the bereaved. You know how these big companies are. But there was gossip too. The trap miners couldn't get the pumps going because the power was rationed, so they shut all the lights off. But even then it wasn't enough. So I guess it was dark when they... I can say, are you okay, or you lost some people down here, didn't you? I guess I'll say that. We all lost people down here. Well, not all of us, but most of us. Doesn't matter now. Look, this old turntable is still wired up. The controls are dead, but I can use my signal generator to switch tracks. If the water hasn't damaged it too much, or we can just keep heading down this tunnel. All this junk hanging up around the turntable is from the company store. Just junk, you know? The miners would buy it and use it to decorate the place, or as landmarks, I guess. Hard to know which way is which down here. It's also dim and gray. So, we can turn. It's weird how this text is all like, you see, like, it's, I don't know, it's all weird and fuzzy. I guess let's turn to the pendulum and this casket. Sounds like a pleasant landmark. <laughs> Caskets, I'm sure a casket leads to a fun place, right? I mean, that couldn't be a negative landmark. So I guess let's go this way first. I think this way is where the casket was, but I'm not sure. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah, 
this place is kind of, I don't know, I guess it's boring, but it's also quite creepy. Because I remember I was pretty creeped out the first time when I was down here, but unfortunately because I already, like I said, failed to try to, try to do a let's play of this game. There's this first area, I've already seen everything there is to see for the most part. And look at that, there's just like a cliff. A dusty reel-to-reel -reel tape player is sta stashed beneath the track, loaded with tape but starved for power. Oh yeah, and I think, now I remember. If we turn the lights out, that'll have power. So let's listen to this for a little bit. <laughs> That's not creepy at all, is it? No. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I think we should leave. Oh, I didn't know those were still down here. What was that? Look, there's a tape layer down there, one of those old reel-to-reel -reel setups. When this mine was active, a couple of folk music archivists spent time there. Recording miners' songs, really academic, ivory tower types, none of the miners really talked to them much. So they stayed at the margins, observed, took notes, and then sometimes they'd get someone on a lunch break to sing into their microphone. Then I guess the power company got some kind of interest in the project and gave the archivist some coal script co tokens to pay the miners with for their songs. Did your parents sing? Oh, uh, yeah, they sang. They sang in the mine for coal script tokens. Yeah, this, I don't know, this this place is kind of, it definitely seems to represent a lot of, or I shouldn't say a lot of, but some small towns really really well, especially the more impoverished small towns out there, like this one seems to be. Because it's kind of sad how a lot of sort of small towns in America, they're kind of only in existence because of something like a mining operation nearby. And it's like, it's crazy how a lot of times the entire lives and sort of existences of the people that live there is completely sort of under the control of the companies that are the most prominent in that small town or in some cases some small towns only exist because certain companies created something like a mine or whatever nearby it is kind of weird i don't know it's just crazy to me how oftentimes a place like what it, you know like as you can sort of see from the way this game represents this company and the power company they sort of controlled everything that happened in this town. And they obviously didn't really care too much about the inhabitants, they just cared about their personal gain, as you can sort of tell with like the cool script tokens and the bad conditions and shitty equipment they had down here. Alright, let's look at the stage. Damn, it's almost totally intact. Thought it would have been as destroyed. Destroyed by what? Well, I'm assuming... That would be the water, so I guess let's ask what this place is, because that seems like a kind of stupid question. It's a recording studio, basically. Kind of thrown together, but... This is where the archivist would record. And I guess... Then they'd sequester themselves down by that tape deck we found to listen to the recorded song. So it's interesting how what she says differs based upon the fact that we already found that other area first. Guess, did you ever come down here? Yeah, I came here with my parents once or twice. They used to play music here, even when those archivists weren't around. It was a nice setup, kind of rickety, kind of dangerous, I guess. But, I don't know. It had a good energy. It was warm, sometimes. And that kind of shows how, like, the miners here obviously had such shitty lives, and in a way it's just the own music they played and the own, I guess, small comforts they could find were the only things that really kept them going in their life. <clears throat> There's a tree, I guess. wonder how they got there, because I feel like that wouldn't be a tree. I don't know. It's weird looking. 
Okay, let's go to the turntable again. Okay. So I think when we started out, we were at the bat feeder and the scarecrow, so let's go to the animal bones and the rowboat. Maybe not, though. I don't know. Now I can't quite remember. Actually, yeah, I think this might have been where we were. I'm not sure. I guess I'll go backwards first, because then I'll be able to figure out if I was already this way. More quickly. Yeah, because obviously the exit is really far away, if you remember. That seemed to take us quite a while to get to. Okay, I think I remember these. I think we were here. But I can't quite tell. Everything kind of does look the same down here. Okay, yeah, we were definitely here. So yeah, this is not where I want to be going. <clears throat> and yeah, it seems like once this mine fell, that's kind of why the town's such a shithole, to be honest, is because this mine was kind of the only thing that this town even existed for, and once it once this big disaster happened, everyone sort of just either died or got up and left. Okay. Okay. So yeah, last time we were at the... So yeah, we want to go to the, pen, uh, the bat feeder and the scarecrow. Go backwards, I guess. Yeah, I think this really is a game that you should sort of, even if you watch this entire Let's Play, really something you should probably, I don't know, experience for yourself. A dead end. And obviously, this seems to lead to some underground tunnel, although the tunnel itself looks like it's almost collapsed because you can see this big, like, gaping hole. Do you hear that kind of a muffled rumbling? Maybe we're near the surface? Yeah, sounds kind of like a highway. I wonder why they stopped digging so abruptly here. Maybe they hit a pipe or something? Well, and obviously it's because they hit the freaking <laughs> edge of a tunnel. Yeah. You wonder how they could screw something like that up. You'd think you'd have an idea of where something like a tunnel was before you actually hit the sides of it, but I suppose if you think about it, I feel like most miners probably don't really, well, I guess nowadays they probably can tell where things are because of, like, the different scanners there are, but I feel like most miners way back when probably just kind of mined in a random direction and just kind of went with it. They didn't probably figure out too much or care too much about where they were driving towards. Here's a broken track. The tracks are all messed up here. This tram isn't going any further. I wonder what's down that tunnel. I guess we'll never find out. Alright, so this one was kind of lackluster. We kind of probably could have skipped this entire area if we wanted to. Yeah, it was the other two paths that were a bit more interesting. So yeah, now we've seen everything. So we have to go back to... The... which one was it? The Animal Bones and the Rowboat? Was it? Yeah, it was the Animal Bones and the Rowboat. Had to be sure. Couldn't quite remember. So yeah, now we're pretty much done with the mine, I, mine, I guess. So let's head out of here. I'm being kind of quiet, but really there's not much to talk about when we're in this mine. Thank God. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, okay, I just 
the, that tunnel where the tracks were broken. I'd like to take a look down there. Huh. It's weird. It's funny because regardless what I say, it the same thing's going to happen. I can either choose as Conway. I guess I'll choose Conway because I'm kind of more t attached to him than I am to Shannon. Actually, I guess if I choose Shannon, I might be able to take a look with her. So actually, I'll choose Shannon. Sure. Okay. I'll be right here. So I wonder if we're going to take over as him or, Con or her or Conway. Because actually, I do remember the last time I played this game, this was about where I left off. And I remember I took over as Conway. Okay, yeah, that is what happens. So it seems like depending on your dialogue choice there, you either take over as Conway or you take over as Shannon. So here's where they... Oh man, it's a bunch of helmets. So I'm guessing this is where they all died. All the miners that were trapped in there. Maybe not, though, because I, I do remember I took over as him when I was outside. So let's see if I'm actually controlling him or if he's just going to do what he wants, because he is walking. Okay, maybe not. Maybe I just don't remember taking over as her. I don't think it did matter then. Because, yeah, I remember last time. I don't remember taking over as Shannon at all last time, but I guess I must have. Because that was a pretty short scene. Craft shack is lined with wooden shelves. Dusty stacks of tape reels and notebooks crowd the room, but a bit of moonlight that's kind of weird I just noticed this thing's rocking left and right I don't know if I'd want to stand underneath this thing maybe it's just me though <laughs> okay a bit of moonlight filters through the window near the ceiling on the small desk in the middle of the room lay three notebooks the one is labeled J Marquez and the other is labeled R Marquez the blue one is unlabeled I guess maybe that wasn't her cousin though I don't know that her cousin's cousin's grave it might actually been the two parents, but I don't remember if I... I wonder what what were the two graves labeled other than Marquez. There was obviously the one Marquez, but I wonder what the R and... I wonder what the other two ones were that weren't. They, it might have been these two's first name. I don't know. I guess I'll do that one. Oh, and she's already out. Pages are covered in disorganized notes. Some written horizontally and others scribbled vertically into margins. A few pages are lined more evenly and divided into th charts. Correlating seasons, lyrics, harmonies, and coal halls. Guess let's open the green one. On each page is a delicately rendered charcoal drawing. Most of the portraits are of rugged faces. Near the middle of the book, there are a few drawings of a young girl in a miner's helmet. She plays along with along the Minecraft or Minecraft, geez, <laughs> along the minecart tracks, collecting pieces of wire. In one drawing, another young girl sits nearby, intent, intently studying a book. And I think. I'm fairly certain that this, the one girl is supposed to be her, I can't, for some reason I forgot her name, and the other is supposed to be Weaver. Now we open the blue notebook. The notebook is full of Greek letters and cryptic mathematical formulas near the back of the book. What first looks like it might be, okay, yeah, Shannon. They, the one was Shannon, the other was Weaver, I believe. Yeah, I guess I can ask, your parents are the archivists? No, Weaver's parents are the archivists. Oh, it was Weaver's parents that are the archivists, so I'm guessing the two drawing of girls was still them. I see. My parents were minors. So that's funny how she acted like the archivists were so foreign, yet really she was technically related to them, but I guess she must not have liked them that much. I can walk on it, but it's slow. I can walk on it, but it's painful. I guess I'll say it's painful. Oh, I've got some painkillers here that could help you out. I got them from a friend when I sprained my wrist installing a security system. You'd better let me drive, though. They're pretty strong. Yeah, maybe that's the best. Don't worry, I've been driving since I was nine. Oh, that's safe. <laughs> I still need to find the zero. Yeah, I do remember. That kind of made me remember. I remember the only time... I think I did drive once when I was, like, ten, and I remember my dad... He, like, forced me to do this. He forced me... Because he, ha I think I was actually like eight or something, and he had me sit in his lap and like steer the, you know, the steering wheel of a truck, and it used to be like an old company truck that my dad had, and he made me steer it while he was like backing out of the driveway. And I remember I was like freaking out, and I didn't want to do it, and then eventually he just like let me walk away because he like kept, I don't know, he like wanted me to steer, and I was so afraid of doing it. 
That was, I think, the first time I probably drive or drove at all, but I don't know. It's funny how I was such a chicken. I was always like that when I was a kid. I was always so timid and afraid to do things like driving and other things like that, but whatever. All right, so I guess I should look for another route to Dogwood Drive, or I still need to find the zero. I guess I'll say that. Yeah, all right. Well, maybe asking Weaver about the zero was the wrong place to start. Maybe we should just ask her for specific directions. Her answers are complicated enough without a layer of indirection at the question. I saw Weaver at my workshop. That's up north by Lake Nolan. Right at Wax and Peonia. Yeah, we were in there, if you remember. The back of the bait shop, pretty glamorous, right? These are the times we live in. She's either up there or back at the farmhouse. Whichever you want to head to first, just let me know. So I guess let's go. Yeah, as you can see, he's limping pretty badly. So he's obviously injured. And actually, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. So, thank you all for watching and hope to see you next time. Goodbye.